Okay, this is 2B1 Energy one more time. Coming to you uh, from my little office, which is not very big, but it's still my office. This is the uh, machine I work on periodically. It's not a very fast machine. It's a very slow machine. It's a very old model. But it'll do for this purpose. The purpose of this video is to actually discuss and talk about some theories that I have on why I feel like people are misreading and misdiagnosing what's going on. Um, the word the phrase that we have up right now is inorganic chemistry. Inorganic chemistry is an element. Uh, as you can see, it says inorganic chem chemistry deals with synthesis and behavior of inorganic and organometallic compounds. Um, this is what kind of led me to my theory of this topic right here. I didn't know about this topic until the mid-2000, but I was on to something before that. But before that, I would like to touch on something different on the actual, what I say, what I've been saying on my social media posts, and that is... Uh, the central nervous system. The central nervous system is, according to this, is that part of the nervous system that consists of the brain and spinal cord. Now, um, can I go... Uh, there's some more wording right there off to the right. It says the central nervous system is the part of the nervous system consisting primarily of the brain and spinal cord. The CNS, which is known as, is so named because the brain integrates the received information and coordinates and influences the activity of all parts of the bodies of bilaterally symmetric animals. All multicellular animals except sponges and jellyfish it consists of a large nerve running from the anterior to the posterior with the anterior end is enlarged into the brain. Not all animals with the central nervous system have a brain, although the large majority do. Now the function of the Central nervous system, the peripheral nerves, it says here, it says the peripheral nerves include the 12 cranial nerves, the spinal nerves, and roots, and what are called the autonomic nerves that are concerned specifically with the regulation of the heart muscle, the muscles in the blood vessel walls, and glands. Now, I want you to remember these uh as we move forward, because this is uh, the main thing I always bring up in my in my posts that I put up on my social media, especially on LinkedIn. Um, I don't use uh, I try. I've been trying to stay uh, away from a lot of this, but um, you know, like I said, it it, it it just people just don't understand the human anatomy sometimes to really grasp what we're referring to. Um, here, what we're going to do is we're going to put in a couple of key phrases about the central nervous system. Um, that I, I'm, I'm kind of like I said, it, it's one of those, you know, we have to understand our human anatomy uh, more so than we do. Okay, as you can see from the diagram right here, the central nervous system is actually uh, located in between this area, these two areas right here. It's the brain, the spinal cord, and the central nervous system is located right around here. Um, it actually contracts all the information, it transforms the information from here and spreads it out all throughout our bodies. Okay? That's a quick overview on now this. I'm, I'm using Wikipedia as um, 
Not that Wikipedia has all the answers, but at the same time, it is a quick source to look up something that uh, is very important in our in our lives, the central nervous system. Wait a minute, hold on. This is what I want to say. Okay, it says right here, the brain makes up the largest portion of the central nervous system. It is often the main structure referred to when speaking of the nervous system in general. The brain is a major functional unit of the central nervous system. While the spinal cord has certain processing abilities, such that as spinal locomotion and can process reflexes, the brain is the major processing unit of the central nervous system. And those are the sources that it says in this section right here about the central nervous system. So, it is uh, such a such an important aspect of our lives that we don't recognize how important it is. Okay, here are some interesting facts about the CNS. Uh, here's a portion that I want to show you. The brain is the most complex organ in the body and uses 20% of the total oxygen we breathe in. The brain can be divided into four main lobes. The temporal, the parietal the occipital, and the frontal. Now, it says here, the central nervous system has been thoroughly studied by anatomists, and physiologists, but it still holds many secrets. It controls our thoughts, movements, emotions, and desires. It also controls our breathing, heart rate, the release of some hormones, body temperature, and much more. The retina, optic nerve, olfactory nerves, and olfactory epithelium are sometimes considered to be part of the CNS alongside the brain and spinal cord. This is because they connect directly with the brain tissue without intermediate nerve fibers. Okay, but this last part really is what I'm really referring to. It also controls our breathing, heart rate, the release of some hormones, body temperature, and much more. There's a quick map. Says the brain is the most complex organ in the human body. The cerebral cort the, the, cere the cerebral cortex contains an estimate of fifteen to thirty three billion neurons, which of which is connected to thousands of other neurons. And this is from the Medical News Today, a newsletter. Now the temporal lobe, important for processing sensory input and assigning it emotional meaning. It also involves in laying down long-term memories.
Okay. So as you can see, there's some deep information about the central nervous system, the CNS. And this is in regards to the spinal cord. Now, one of the things that is prevalent are the central nervous system disorders. Now, as you can see, the central nervous system disorders include uh, meningitis, central nervous system orders that can also cause sleepiness or fatigue. This includes Parkinson's disease, dementia, Could be from head trauma. Some symptoms may include persistent or sudden onset of a headache, a headache that changes or is different, a loss of feeling or tingling, a weakness or loss of muscle strength, a loss of double vision, Loss of sight or double vision. You have to witness my slow computer. Okay, here's a quick overview of the nervous system disorders. It says here, what are some of the disorders of the nervous system? The nervous system is vulnerable to various disorders it can be damaged by the following, trauma, infections, degeneration, structural defects, tumors, blood flow disruption, and autoimmune disorders. You got the vascular disorders such as a stroke, infections such as meningitis, You got the functional disorders such as a headache, epilepsy, dizziness, neurologia. And then you got the degeneration such as Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, uh, lateral sclerosis, which is ALS, that's the Lou Gehrig's uh, disease. Actually, I said it wrong. It's a myotropic lateral sclerosis. You got the Huntington, Korea, and Alzheimer's disease. All these are related to the central nervous system disorders. It says signs and symptoms, once again, uh, persistent or sudden onset of headache, headache that, change, that changes or is different, uh, loss of feeling or tingling, weakness or loss of muscle strength, loss of sight, double vision, memory loss, Impaired mental ability, lack of coordinate, coordination, muscle rigidity, tremors, seizures, back pain which radi radiates to the feet, toes, or other parts of the body, muscle wasting, slur speech, new language impairment. And it says here the systems of the nervous system disorders may look like other medical conditions or problems. Always see your healthcare provider for a diagnosis. One more time. 
The symptoms of a nervous system disorder may look like other medical conditions or problems. I don't agree with this last part about always see your healthcare provider for diagnosis. I don't agree with that part. I, I agree with trying to actually use holistic approaches to actually rid yourself of these symptoms. But this one is from the, uh, an overview from the John Hopkins Medicine Health. So it's a pretty credible website that discusses about the overview of the nervous system disorders. And real quick, this is one of the reasons why I keep on touting about the central nervous system disorder because what it seems like everything is related to or everything's going back to is that where our central nervous system is located is where the problems lie. And so if our central nervous if our central nervous system is located as such, it it could break down and have problems with from anybody for any reason, from a car accident to slipping and falling on the sidewalk, to being punched in the head, to playing football, to, to a lot of different mechanisms when it comes down to head trauma. Um, by breaking these things down, according to the scientists, it could possibly cause these tumors that are happening. Now, that's what I'm reading. I don't know if anybody else is reading that. But in the meantime, I'm going to move forward and we're going to go into um, inorganic chemistry. We're going to go back to inorganic chemistry real quick. Okay, we're back on uh, inorganic chemistry. Um, we're going to go, uh, as I said, different portions of different parts of these videos that I'm putting out. But in the meantime, I wanted to introduce these things Inorganic chemistry to me is the, the 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 centerpiece of our technology today. It is the centerpiece of our technology. Um, there's not too much that we have in our lives that does not have some form of some inorganic chemical involved into it. Um, you can meet a lot of people in the chemistry industry that know hardly nothing about inorganic chemistry. You can meet a bunch of doctors and scientists who know nothing about inorganic chemistry. It is a specialized field. It is probably highly sought for. Um, it is a very complex field. It's not easy to really grasp. Um, at the same time, there's so much that goes into it. That's what makes the inorganic chemistry so important in society as today, as we speak. So this is, like I said, the Wikipedia site for inorganic chemistry. If you want, you can check it out. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's web pages. But I'm going to cut off this video and the next video we're going to really go deep into inorganic chemistry some of the things that I came across personally many many years ago to try to connect it to why I feel like the it's our central nervous system that is breaking down and causing all these problems where people are getting uh, falling very very sick and um, and and passing away you know they're, they're just passing away uh, so this is 2B1 Energy, and we, we hope you uh, check out our next video, and it's going to be on inorganic chemistry. Respect on the one that's with Yahweh.